Welcome to A Court of Fairies and Fangirls. Um, I'm Alex. And I'm Sarah. And this is a Sarah J. Mass fan podcast where we are obsessed with her books and can't stop thinking about it or talking about it. So we figured, why not record us thinking and talking about it? So we're going to break down chapters, go through each book separately, go into character analysis and any thoughts or kind of theories that we have about books, characters, plots, etc. And maybe play some fun games along the way. Exactly. So welcome and enjoy. Welcome to our mini set. <laughs> this is different. Yes. Than the main episode mm-hmm. because there are spoilers. Lots of spoilers. Red flags. Red, red flags going off right now. Don't listen if you haven't read. Yes, if you have not read literally every Sarah J. Mass book <laughs> at minimum this series. Don't keep listening. Come back to this when you're done. It'll be more fun for you and us once you finish the series. Spoilers. Yes. So. You've been warned. You have been warned. This is our mini-sode, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about Tamlin today. Yes. But first, something I just want, I want you to know, because we're this thoughtful about this experience. So, you know that sweet little, like, doo-doo-doo noise, that, or noise, music, that's happening in our, like, introductions and our lead-outs? You might think, oh, they just picked something at total random. It sounds relatively nice. No. The name of that noise is Wingspan. And if you have read this series, which you should because you're listening to the spoiler-filled mini-sode, I just thought you would appreciate that. You should appreciate that. You should. (laughs) Absolutely, you should. This song is called Wingspan. You're welcome. That is all. That was was just my, like, top of the podcast news for everybody. Fun fact for everyone. Fun fact for the day. Yes. (laughs) So last week we talked about the Archeron sisters, mm-hmm. which our t-shirts are coming tomorrow. Also. Oh, yay. I've been observing the track. I'm so excited. Woo. Uh, but today we're going to talk about Tamlin because we finally, in this last episode we had, we learned his name. We started to get introduced to him, mm-hmm. starting to get tidbits of who he is. Yes. So let's talk about him. Okay. In just the general sense. Yes. So it's like overview of Tamlin for the whole series. Yes. We start out where he's this beast. Yes. And so we think fairies might be beasts, but then he turns into a person. Or so fae. there's this the shifting. He can shift into a wolf. Shift. Yeah, so he can shift. So he's a wolf slash fae. And he's like, kind of like him. He's sort of respectful. Sort yes. of nice to Farah, And then they fall in love. And you're like, oh my gosh, Tamlin's this great guy. I love him yeah. so much. And he sacrifices himself at the end, and she saves him. Mm-hmm. So it's like this beautiful love story. And then... And then downhill, trauma downhill. destroys everything. Downhill, downhill, downhill. <laughs> so I think in this first book, I just... I know we're rereading through it right yeah. now. I also recently listened to it on audiobook, like mm-hmm. when I was driving because I was in the car a lot. So yes. I just also re-listened to this. And there are certain moments... Where it's clearly, like, I'm supposed to be liking Tamlin, Mm -hmm. but at this point, I'm just rolling my eyes. I'm like, (laughs) yeah, whatever, Tamlin. And that's just me being slightly bitter. But um, in the first book, he's, like, really sweet to her. And you can tell he's trying to protect her, right? Because he sends her away. Right. So I think that's what gets warped. Because he tries to protect her. Mm -hmm. She gets stuck under the mountain anyway. Right. And then she dies yes. at one point. Yes. And, and resurrects. She gets to come back to life. And so mm-hmm. I think at that point, Tamlin, I think that's when something like the crazy clicks in his brain. Yeah. Because it's like, oh my gosh, she died. I have to do everything I can to protect her. Because yeah. I can't experience her death again. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where the biggest like crazy transition Yeah. But it's, I like, I mean, I think everybody gets mad at Tamlin. Nobody likes him in the second book. But it's like you also... You have to, like, respect his intentions. It's like, he lost the... Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> respect his intentions, not his actions. Fair and, enough. Like, his thought. But, like, he did everything out of love for her. He was yeah. genuinely trying to protect her. Like, he knows that she has all these different abilities because right. of the High Lord is giving, you know, part of their power to bring her to life and make her high fae. So he's just doing his best because he knows that they're all going to want her. They're going to want to kill her or they're going right. to want to take her for their powers. Like, right. So... He's trying to protect her by, like, not letting her train. So I I understand him. It's just 
it's insane to think that she would never, they yeah. would never find out or like that yes. something wouldn't come about where she would need to use her powers and like right. know how to use them. So it's ridiculous. It was notion, good but, intent. Right. But the actual follow through was terrible because right. Reese does the exact opposite. Right. Because he's like, you have all these powers, you need to know how to use them so you can protect yourself. Right. And ultimately we see her pick that over the excessive control. Like, I think that's what it kind of becomes is out of his, like, fear for her. Right. He becomes way too controlled. Oh, yeah. And that's that's what I mean. Like, he had great intentions in that yeah. he was trying to protect her. It's just everything came out terribly wrong right. because of... Good intentions don't always mean good results. Yeah. Good intentions plus trauma right. equals <laughs> bad. Yes. Um, but no, like, he clearly was trying. I just... Well, and then it's like you're trying, you think you're... It's, it's the classic thing where you get so convinced of you doing the right thing in your own mind that you mm-hmm. can't see past it at all. Right. So he was so convinced he did, he was doing the right thing and he made the right decision that even after she left... Right. He's like... Absolutely not. Yeah. This is ridiculous. He thinks that she was stolen, even though she's like, no, I'm leaving right. you. And he still is so deluded that he's like, nah, that's not true. That can't, that can't be well, what happens. Because it's like later on, like he basically, you know, like he's letting all these like people come into his, into the spring court yeah. as like a launch pad because of Farah. He's yeah. like, he, everything he says he's doing is for her and yeah. like for her protection and for her sisters. Like, so you're like, man, like, this guy is, like, so deep-rooted in his yeah. thought that he is right and he is doing it for her. That he's blind to everything. Yeah. Like, he's so, he doesn't care about the consequences of anything except right. what he's doing for Pharaoh's love. Which, at that point, you you have to be, like, yeah. at least somewhat understanding of the fact that you're not going to win her back. Mm-hmm. At least. But, like, but, book, book three, early book three, Tamlin, yeah. is, like... I think at that point he's just trying to justify himself. Like when yeah. he's interacting with Hyburn and, and Iantha, mm-hmm. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Yeah. It's like, no, you know better. And you're just trying yeah. to like balance between both worlds at that point. Like right. I think he dips way too far into the crazy. Mm-hmm. And I think by the end of the third book he comes out because like he helps them save Elaine. Right. And you're like, oh, maybe he's finally starting to like see mm-hmm. he made bad decisions. Right. So we don't really have any insight into him when this, like, the third book ends. Right. We just know, like, he's kind of alone and on his own at the Supreme Court. And that's... Right. Hope he's okay, but... And it's just, like, you feel bad for him. Like, at that, at that point, I, like, felt bad because it's, like, everyone left. Like, because yeah. when she turned his whole court against him... Oh. I mean, that's so amazing, like, what she did. But it, yeah. like, it breaks my heart. It's, like, he genuinely, like, cared about her. And, like, I think he just kept considering her human still yeah like, I think in his mind like he knows she's high fae or fae but like he just acts as if she's still human and all his actions yeah. are taken as if she's still human and can't take care of herself that's true and, like it's that classic like not being able to understand that this person has grown right and you're it, it's like with a parent when you're still yeah. someone as a child mm-hmm. and that's what you can it's like how he first met her it's like he was mm-hmm. able to take care of her and she fell in love with him because of that so it's yeah. like I feel like he's still trying to revert back to why she fell in love with him mm. and how, like, he acts towards her and, like, he doesn't understand that she's grown. Yeah. Which, like, everybody grows. So, um, I feel like you have to develop with them. So, yeah. it's like, I just feel bad for him at the end of the third book. It's like, yeah. but, like, he, I mean, he brings Reese back. So, it's like, clearly, like, he's, he's genuinely trying. But you yeah. can see that, like, she chose him. Like, it destroys Tamlin. But, he's doing it for her still like he's still doing it for her so it's like yeah. he could have been a dick and been like no that's like, true Reese dies sorry that's like, true that would have been him winning yeah in the end, but like he way. doesn't he's still like he's still doing it out of love for her so like yeah. i respect him in that regard yeah and then her him saving elaine is also out of love for her right yeah so it's like that's clearly still there for him even if it's become twisted and warped right so he's still i think he's still worth redeeming yeah We'll see. I'm, you know what? Well, I think I've said this before. Mm-hmm. Sarah J. Mass convinced me, like, Nesta was yeah. worth redeeming. So, mm-hmm. like, why not Tamlin, too? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. But um, one thing, though, circle back to the first book on Tamlin. Yeah. When he's in Amarantha's court, mm-hmm. and he's, like, just sitting there not doing anything. Oh. What were you feeling during that? Because I was, like, irritated. I was, I don't know. I was, like, I had very mixed feelings. I think mm-hmm. it was more like 
he's like, why aren't you saying anything? But then it's like, I understand it's like, he doesn't want to do anything because it's going to clearly let her know that he's into her. Like, he's trying to protect her. Like, right. always, he's always trying to protect her. So it's... But Amaretha knows he's into her. Like, he's not fooling anybody at this I point. Know. But I think she just wants that reaction out of him. Mm, he's, uh, like, trying not to give it to her. Yes. Oh, but, like, it, it, like, makes me so mad, though, like... It, well, it makes me mad, but it's also, like, so romantic how, like, <laughs> I know it's very contradicting, but, like, the last, like, the last night before her, like, final challenge, mm-hmm. he, like, goes and he, like, takes her into this back room and he, like, kisses her instead of, like, trying to, like, send her away, like, yeah. he talks about. Um, it's, like, so sweet. It's, like, all he wants to do is just be with her. Yeah. Um, it's, like, the one time I feel like he's not trying to protect her. It's like he's just like living in the moment with her. And well, like, I think at that point he was convinced that she was gonna die. Probably, and so I, it's I think like, he felt like there was no way out. Yeah. So I like loved that scene. I was like, this is so yeah. sweet. And then, yeah, like R- Reese like saves the day basically, and like pretty much Tamlin like owes him that. Classic Reese. No, I'm I kidding. Know. <laughs> I know. Like, it is. It is always saving the day. Um. um but no, I think with Tamlin, I agree. I hear, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I just wish. I don't know what his her relationship with him ends up reminding me of like that high school romance mm. where you were. It was passion. You were so into each other, yeah. but then it's like as you move into this like next phase of life. Mm-hmm. You're just not working, and it can become so intense and so toxic, yeah. and it's like, it's like, ah, this is, like, not good. And so it's, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, you'll separate because you're just not right for each other, mm-hmm. but you still have that, like, warmth in a way towards yeah. each other where it's, like, if you called that ex, you're, like, hey, can you help me with this? They show up. So right. that's kind of what I picture. I feel like that's a perfect, like, explanation of their relationship. It's so high school. Like, the one yeah. that you think will last forever, but it's, right. like, as you move away to college and, like, meet other people, you're, right. like, this is not, like, perfect at all. Well, and it's very classic for people to be in those situations when they feel like they're losing each other to become right. even more controlling, mm-hmm. and that's just, like, that's what I feel like happened yeah. there. And it's, like, obviously the physical side's good, but then it's, like, the emotional side is, like, It just doesn't click. Like, no. You, you experienced some, a time together, and mm-hmm. that's where that connection was, but it ended yeah and it's hard to let go for a lot of people yeah so and I think that's why in that second book there's so much of that like mm-hmm. inner t- turmoil in Farrah because she's stuck in the yeah. high school relationship with Tamlin where she doesn't want to let him go because they've been through so much together mm-hmm. even though they just don't fit each other anymore yeah I agree but me saying that does convince me I convince myself again I keep <laughs> convincing myself of things as I talk about this through that he's not an evil person. No. I think the more you read the series, like, rereading series is, is good for you. I feel like you yeah. get a better perspective. Because the first time you read it, you're like, I hate Tamlin. Like, Screw this guy. He's the worst guy ever. <laughs> like, she deserves to be free of him. All these, like, negative thoughts towards him. But, like, you know, reading it second, third time, and then especially, like, as we're doing, like, an analysis of this, mm-hmm. it's like, I can really step back and think about it. And I'm like, I don't hate him as much as I say I hated him. Yeah. So I can gain perspective as to, like, why he did some of the things he did, and I can appreciate them more. Even if I don't agree with them, I still understand them more, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the thing, is understanding it more. Yeah. Truly. Mm Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I just, I have mixed feelings on Tamlin. Mm -hmm. You have your Elaine theory. theory. We'll see. I Mm -hmm. mean, I... Also, in regards to the Elaine theory, when I was reading this, I was so trying to pay so much attention to how they described the spring court. Yeah. Because I knew, like, we had Roses talked- and violets? Well, well no, that's what I was I was like, where does it say roses and violets? I was like, this has to be it. Um, so, but as I was, because I knew we were, like, reading this section, and I remember, like, what we talked about the last mini yeah. and so I'm, like, reading it, and the first thing it says about the spring court, it says, like, the roses, and I was like, oh, okay, we got roses. Like, where are the violets? <laughs> And then the only time I mentioned violets is when she's talking about the still life that she sees. Like, the first picture mm-hmm. that she truly notices at the spring court is, um, it's, like, all these flowers. And yeah. like, roses and violets in there. And I was like, oh, is this the tie? Is this the tie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's it's so hilarious. funny you mentioned that. That's exactly what I was looking for when I was reading it. I was like, oh is this going to connect? But I'm going to be so, so much more intentional about trying to <laughs> see connections 
as I read through like the yeah. intro to the spring court section. Especially with Elaine. I know, especially because I have theories that I want to know if I'm even remotely close to That's being so right. So funny. Well, they so. they take they there's many scenes in the garden, so there's many right. opportunities for violence to pop up. Right. But he did okay. Wait though. Oh oh. Tamlin, one of the scenes where she was in the garden with him, mm-hmm. talks about how these rose bushes mm-hmm. were a mating gift mm-hmm. from his dad to his mom. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's part, like, he connects roses with mating gift. Yeah. And so that's the love, and the violets are the death and resurrection, so is there going to be... Mm. I don't know. Theories, theories. Maybe those are multiple parts. The roses is, like, mating with Tamlin. Mm-hmm. Well, no, she's not mated with Tamlin, but... Being with him. Okay, but wait, though. She's mated to Lucian. Yeah. I moved closer to the mic. I need to probably go back. But if she's mated with Lucian, Mm -hmm. Tamlin would not step on his buddy's girl. No, but we think Tamlin could possibly be dead. Or will Lucian die and Tamlin and Elaine come together? I don't know. I'm just spitballing. I know. I know. I still don't want Lucian to die. But. (laughs) (laughs) Well, these are the early chapters of Lucian just remind me how much I... I like his, like, I know. I like, like him, too. I forgot well, how, like, hateful he was towards her. little fox. I love it. Yeah. But, um, but no, it could be, I don't know. We'll keep paying attention. Yes. For roses and violets. Yes. But, um, but yeah. So mixed feelings all around on Tamlin. hmm Yep. Much more empathetic towards him now. Yes. We are much more empathetic, for sure. But, yeah, I'm very, I'm so intrigued for this next book. hmm And how it potentially affects Tamlin. Yeah. Because right now he's just sad and alone. I know. With Lucian, like, casually coming to visit. <laughs> His only so friend. So awkward. It's I know. So awkward. Okay, well, something we do know about Tamlin, though, is despite... Ooh, okay, no, this is interesting to think about, though. Mm-hmm. He was so anti-slavery because his family held slaves. And yeah. he fought in the war on the side of the humans against slavery. Mm-hmm. But in his toxic nature with Feyre, he's almost treating her like a slave towards yeah. the end of it. Mm-hmm. So in, I, I'm like just connecting those dots. So it's yeah. like he became the thing. So it's like not only do we not like what he became, but right. he became the thing that he most hated in the world. Mm, that's interesting. So I wonder if he's like sitting and stewing on that by himself. And that's I'm why. Sure maybe that's why in that third book mm-hmm. he's starting to come out of it yeah. because maybe he started to realize like oh my god what did I become yeah that's definitely possible but yeah I forgot that was one of the reasons why I do really like Tamlin in the first book is because you learn that he was very anti-slave right um so yeah I forgot about that but yeah that's that's really it mixed feelings all around and something I did just also remember okay. one last thing Tamlin and Reese mm-hmm that relationship oh my gosh yeah that's crazy right that like kills me i'm like how how do you do that to reese it's like reese and tamlin used to be buddies right because they're children of high fae right and terrible families and terrible families Mm -hmm. reese helped train tamlin in war and then they their families like killed each other yeah tamlin literally goes to his house and like they kill his mother like Oh my god. So messed up. And then Reese's family retaliates right. against Tamlin's family. And so there's like <sighs> this intense hatred between yes. the two of them. And part of me is like, man, men. I know. If y'all just talk to each other a little bit more, I know. You probably wouldn't hate each other so much. But like Reese keeps his own secrets during that too. It's not right. all on Tamlin. But it's that dynamic is also so interesting through this series. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's part of the reason why I think he, like, spirals into an extra level of craziness. For sure. Because it's, like, not only is she leaving me, but she's leaving me for my greatest enemy. Yeah. Which is, like, very intense. Mm-hmm. But that relationship is really sad. I wonder if part of his redemption story mm-hmm. will also be a reconciliation with Reese a little bit. Probably. I mean, he already saved him, so I do feel like he gets, like, a little brownie point for that one. He, he does get a little um, brownie point. But, yeah. But, like, the two of them reconciling with each other. Like, they're both... Mm-hmm. I don't know if it'll ever get to that level, but I think... I think it'll get be... one level further than where it's at now. I could see that, yeah. Not not best friends. No, but, like, they can be in the same room without hating each other. Or just, like, talk to each other about what happened. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Just apologize, both of them. Because they both effed up. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of those things where, like, if we all just said sorry a little bit more, mm-hmm. life would be a little bit easier. Yeah. 
But no, he's like such a, he's so rude to Reese. Like, Amarantha's whore, oh, how yeah. dare you? So like, that tension is very interesting. Mm-hmm. So we got summarized Tamlin. Yeah. Uh, started out really strong and decent. Mm-hmm. Spiraled a little bit into some insanity out of his trauma. Yep. On his way out of it. Yeah, working on the redemption path. Working on the redemption path. Besties with Lucian. Mm-hmm. Enemies with Reese. Well, and love interest is a question mark right yeah. now. <laughs> Big old question mark. So we'll see. Thank you so much for listening to A Court of Fairies and Fangirls, a Sarah J. Mass fan podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe. And let us know what you think. Jump in on the conversation. We look forward to chatting with you more next week. Bye-bye.